Okay. You could be in this class. Yeah, you could use a toaster. That's true. You got a microwave. Oh. I'll start having my lunch. <laughs> okay. So are we going? Yeah. All right. So here's what I want you to see from yesterday on these lemming problems. Okay. So here's the main assumption is that you're going to launch with some horizontal velocity vx. And the key assumption is that there is no horizontal acceleration. Okay? There is no horizontal acceleration. Mm -hmm. Because we're assuming that there's no forces acting. So its inertia will maintain that velocity. So that's why horizontally we can use r equals vx time, which is a fancy way of saying distance equals velocity times time. That's all it is. You need the lab, don't you? Yes. Yeah. Why didn't you speak up? <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's not the right line. Just get that top line of data from somebody, the time and the, and the range. Okay. So what allows us to use this is the key assumption that there is no horizontal forces, there is no horizontal acceleration. So what that means is that if you drop an object and it falls straight down, or if you roll something off the cliff, gravity can't tell the difference. Yeah. So if you look at that calculation of time, which is the square root of 2y over g, and I put y because that's the vertical distance, and I put g because it's going to be that gravitational acceleration. So this is the ultimate thing. What happens in the x stays in the x. What happens in the y stays in the y. So when that ball is dropped, or if it falls straight down, we can use this equation because we're assuming that the initial velocity is going to be zero. So I beg of you, whatever you do, don't cross this over. Don't take your horizontal distance and use that with the gravitational acceleration. Right? Don't. Right? This is why you make a sketch. Okay? That is absolutely vital so that you know what's happening in each direction. Okay, it's absolutely vital. So, and this is this question down below on number seven. Okay, so on number seven, when you're going to draw that graph, so let's just start with the one that's just dropped. So, if I just take out, for example, and just drop out, what's the initial velocity of out? Zero. Zero. What's the acceleration of out going to be? Nine. Negative 9.8 meters per second squared, right? There you go. Boom. That's it. That's the drop. Now, if I take Al and I throw Al horizontally, okay? I throw Al horizontally. What's the only acceleration that Al is going to experience? Still negative 9.8 meters per second squared. So on number seven, both lines are the exact same. Yes, one does go flying off, but what happens in the x stays in the x. So what would happen is that at a certain amount of time, these two objects, if you could do like a freeze frame where you're, you're looking at them at different points, they would be completely identical in terms of the distance that they fell. Okay? They would be exactly identical. They're both going to hit the ground at the same time because if you look at, and again, this is what we talked about yesterday, more and more you've got to figure out not only what's in the equation, but it's also what's not in the equation. Okay? Like why didn't I why didn't I put out a scale yesterday and have you all find the mass of the marble? It doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. You can't put the mass of that marble in there if you try. Okay? Relative humidity doesn't matter. Okay? Wind speed doesn't matter. Okay? So you only deal with what you can become a factory. Now, when this thing lands, it's going to have a horizontal component to it, and it's going to have a vertical component to it. So when I talk about speed, okay, and this is going to be important, even like on today's assignment, when I talk about speed, what I'm talking about is that 
hypotenuse, which is a resultant of those x and y velocities acting together. Okay? So when I talk about speed, that's the hypotenuse. Okay? So you, some people like to think of it this way. Imagine that you're sitting there with a radar gun, and you're measuring the speed of that ball as it comes in. Okay? That's what I'm talking about. But that gun doesn't have the capacity to resolve it into X and Y components. Okay. So on uh, number six, make sure I know which one is the rolled and which one is the dropped one. Now on that back side, let me kind of give you a hint because if your answer to 1A is wrong, everything else is going to be wrong. So on that back side, on that time, that should be a little bit less than two seconds. Okay? A little bit less than two seconds. So on 1A on the back side. Okay? Now, when you get down to that about a third of the way down, on the back side, I said, if the horizontal velocity is doubled, how would each of the following change? Do not just tell me, oh, it's going to increase or decrease. There's two ways you can approach this. You can do smash mouth physics and recalculate the values, or you can take the more elegant mathematical approach. Okay? So either tell me it doubles, it triples, it increases by the square root of three, whatever. Okay? or you calculate those numbers. And then the same thing is going to happen if the height of the cliff was doubled. What's going to happen to time? What's going to happen to range? What's going to happen to Vx, Vy? Uh, make sure, listen to me, make sure on 2, 3, 4, and 5 that all of your answers have at least three significant digits. And if you have an answer of hypothetically, let's say 0.4, if you write 0 0.4, how many significant digits is that? One. One. Okay. Now, if it's exactly 0 0.4, what do you do? Zero. Put, zero. Put zeros on the end of that. Okay. That might happen. I'm just saying hypothetically, like on 2A. I'm just saying. <laughs> might happen. Might not. Probably will. It's not a 4, by the way. Yeah. It's not a 4. But it's that concept that's there. Now, when you talk about problem number four, okay? Yeah. So here's the cliff divers, and if you you can actually Google this. Okay, these guys are crazy. So literally, they run the jump off a cliff. They have rocks. Boom, they land in the water. Okay. So what? I know you hope you really don't like a big strong headwind right as you jump. It's like ah! Okay. Because this is like a one-time mistake. You would, this would be a one-time mistake. So at number four, you got to figure out the minimum horizontal velocity. Okay? Minimum. So that would just put you just past the, the rocks down below. So again, start with the idea that range equals Vx time, and then time equals the square root of 2x over a or x equals one half at squared, however you want to roll that, okay? So the first thing you have to do is find the time. When you're finding these subcalculations of time, don't round that, okay? Like you, you, that time should be like 2.89 seconds. Don't round it to three, don't round it to 2.9. Keep at least three digits, okay? At least three digits. So your answer to number four should be around four meters per second, okay? And that's still, I mean, I, I'm old and I can run that fast, okay? Now, if you do the calculations and you get like 10 meters per second, don't do it, okay? Unless you are a world-class sprinter, don't try this, okay? You are, and you will make this mistake one time, and one time only. I don't want to try it. Well, because you're falling for 12 meters, so put this in perspective. This is like two and a half meters. Yeah. Okay. That'd be falling pretty high. Yeah, yeah, it's, yeah, that's, it's, it's a way. I have a question. So, so, so is it okay then you plug in 12 then, the distance? Or do I have to plug Or do you plug in like 12.1? No, no, plug in 12. Okay. okay. 
but then that's going to get you the minimum velocity just to get to that point. Okay. Okay. Yeah, plug in 12. Okay. All right. Any questions on anything else? Going once, going twice. So, so get back into them. Oh, I have one. Oh. Okay. On on six A. Well, I'm just on like right before impact. Would that velocity be like, or? Are you talking? About would that be parallel? Time? Yeah. Yeah. The book question. Hold on. It's on page nine. I actually had a question. Oh, stop. I, I can ask more. Stop. Stop. Well, it's that no. Is it just like a remote? It's the weirdest thing. It took me a while to figure it out. Like, oh, that's a remote. <laughs> okay. All right. So, now that we've been completely distracted by that question, which one, number six? Yeah, six A. Okay. So on number six, here's your setup, right? You're gonna throw it at 40 degree. 40 degree angle. So here's the question. Then ball lands around some distance away. Is there any point in the trajectory where velocity and acceleration are parallel to each other? Okay, so here's the deal. As this thing flies through the air, what's the only force acting on it? Gravity. Gravity. Sorry. Acceleration is always down. So acceleration is always going to be acting straight down. Mm -hmm. Okay? So at any point, if you were to draw that resultant velocity vector, at any point, is that going to be parallel with that acceleration vector? Well, like right before impact? No, 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 no. Even then. Because right at impact, it's going to, it's going to have a Vx and Vy to it. So no. No. Oh, okay. Now, but... Is there any point where they are perpendicular yes. to each other? Yes. Yes. At the, Where's that at? At the top of the parabola. At the top, because at the top. Then it's the tangent line, is it? Yeah. At the top, it, at the top doesn't have any vertical velocity. No, it only has horizontal, horizontal velocity. So at the top, there are right angles, but they're never parallel to each other. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay. Well, cool. Sir, fantastic. Okay. Keep the camera on. Yeah. It's yours. We're never going to set it up, right? Actually, if you just want to do stuff, I'll give you something on my computer right quick. Thank you. Uh, Keaton, pick number between 30 and 60. 31. <laughs> You picked it. 35. 50. No, no, 50. No, we'll, do, we'll, we'll work with 31 degrees. Oh, no way. Okay. Oh, 60 would have been good. No, 30. 30, 30 or 60. Is this what you want? Vitor, pick a number between 20 and 40. Is the worst. 30. No. 20. 20. Okay. 31. 21, 31, no, okay. So visualize this. So we're gonna launch a freshman. Oh, <laughs> I know. The only, the only thing to try to get. And then the freshman did an art class. And he's just a freshman. There must have been one, no, there's gonna be one freshman. No, he got bullied by no. a freshman in high there's school. Not. That's what it was. <laughs> so, nah, he went in like a class. We're gonna launch a freshman. Oh yeah, what? That's the lady you punch. Huh? The lady you hit. Or the, the no, there's a hit. grandma, and yeah, then there's, there's the, a grandma, and you hit a kid. Okay, a, you smack. That, that's the I want to tell when everybody says that everybody needs to do that. <laughs> yeah. 
So we're going to launch the freshman at 20 meters per second at an angle of 31 degrees. Now, here's the first thing that you do on a problem like this, okay? This is the very first thing. The first thing that you have to do is take those 20 meters per second at that angle, and you have to resolve it into the x and y components, okay? That is the very first thing that you have to do. So, make this sketch 20 meters per second. This angle is 31 degrees. Mm -hmm. So, Jackson, how am I going to find the y component of that velocity? Sine or cosine? Mm -hmm. Sine, because it's a side opposite. So, my vertical component will be the velocity times the sine of... The angle. Okay, this is old school. Okay, so we're gonna go retro, old school, breaking vectors into components. Okay, we've done this before. This is nothing new. So somebody take 20 meters per second times the sine of 31 degrees. 10.3. What'd you get? 10.3. 7.10. 10.3. Dude, you guys are cut off over there. Me? He was there to say the same. Okay. So, what did we get? I might have heard wrong. Okay, what did you get? 10.3. 10 10.3. 10 10 meters per second. How many signals? Three. That's cool. We can go 10.3. Okay, now, so how am I going to find my Vx then? Cosine. Cosine theta? Yep. That's cool. So somebody take 20 meters per second times the cosine O31 degrees. 17.1. Now, here's what you do. As soon as you use that launch velocity of 20 meters per second to find these X and Y components, never speak of it again. It is dead to you. Okay? Seriously, it is dead to you. Do not use it again, never speak of it again. It's like it never happened, okay? Now, at this point, I want you to all pretend that this never happened, okay? What we just did never happened. It's like the CIA. I was never here. This operation never took place, okay? I want you to pretend that you were getting ready for the, for the acceleration test. And I'm going to launch the ball straight up with a velocity of 10.3 meters per second, okay? Straight up, 10.3 meters per second. So I want to find the time up. I want to find the time down. I want to find the maximum height. And I want to figure out that height at a time of one second. And I want to find out that height at two seconds. Now, let's talk about the time up. Is my time up going to be bigger or smaller than one second? Bigger. Why? Because it's, it's the 10.3 is greater right. than the acceleration of Well, what if my initial velocity was exactly 9.8? It would take one second. One second. It would take exactly one second. So since that's a little bit more than one second, my time up is going to be more than... One second. Okay, so I know when I find my time up, it's going to be a little bit more than a second. But less than... Two. 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 So it's going to be somewhere between 1 and 2. Probably closer to 1, okay? All right. So how are we going to find that time up? So v, v equals, equals v naught plus a two. Yeah. V minus v naught over a. Over a. Final velocity is going to be? Zero. Minus 10.3. Divided by 9.8 meters per second squared. What do you get for that time up? 1.05. Okay. So that kind of makes sense, want. right? So it would be a little bit more than a second, and it is, because if it was 9.8, it would be exactly one second. Or a little bit more than 9.8, so it's just going to be a little bit more than one second. Okay. So we got the time up. That's going to be 1.05 seconds. So what's going to be my time down? Same difference. Now, that's a huge if on projectile motion problems. If it returns back to the same height, then it's symmetrical. 
But if it's not, like if it fall, like if you're launching it off a cliff and it falls all the way down, like remember like the ball off the boating problems on that acceleration test? Mm -hmm. So if it's not symmetrical, you can't do that. But in this case, it is. Now, how are we going to find that maximum height? There's a couple of different ways you can do it. X equals V naught T plus one half AT squared. So X equals one half AT squared plus... Or you can use that equation. V naught time. Now, if you're going to use this, and you can, it's valid. You can. But there's a couple of things that you have to be very, 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 very careful of. That has to be a negative 9.8 meters per second squared. Mm -hmm. This velocity, listen to me, this velocity has to only be the vertical component of that velocity. Like in the problem where we're launch the freshman, that don't use the 20 meters per second. Because this is the quintessential thing of what happens in the x stays in the x, what happens in the y stays in the y. So as soon as you start to use that acceleration of negative 9.8 meters per second squared, you only use the vertical component of that velocity. Now, am I going to use 1.05 seconds or am I going to use half that time? 1.05. Double it. Or would I double it double. and use 2.0, 2.10? Oh, and I use 1.05. Why am I using Because you're looking for the nine, distance nine, on the way up. Because that's when it's at its maximum height, right? Yeah. Okay? So if you're going to do this, and you can, and you can, okay, and it's cool. So you're going to come in here and you're going to go 1 half times negative 9.8 meters per second squared times 1.05 second squared plus 10.3 times 1.05. Oh, 05. You can do this. Mathematically, it's complicated, okay? Because you got to square root of 1.05, you got to multiply by negative 4.9, and you got to do that over there. But, but, there are times, this is the only way that you can do this, okay? There is no other option. This is the only way that you can do this. So, for example, like when we want to find that height at one second or two seconds, so when you want to find the height at a particular point in time, this is the only game in town. That's the only way you can do this. So you will run into problems when you say, hey, what's the height at a particular point as it goes through that projectile? You don't have a choice. That's the only way you can do this. So you can do this, and that's cool. Now, Pop, what else did you say was another way to do this? That equation. You can so also you use that, that equation. Plus 2AD. Ah, oh, that's cool. We've been down this road before. V squared minus V naught squared over 2A is going to equal our distance. And again, only use the vertical component of the velocity, not the overall launch velocity. So you could go 0 squared minus 10.3 squared divided by 2G and find your maximum height that way. This is cool. But it only works to find your maximum height because you know that's when your final velocity is going to be zero. That's slightly less complicated mathematically than the other one. Now, if you drew a velocity time graph, which would look something like this, and you know that's mathematically, how it, mathematically this is the easiest way to find the maximum height. Why? Because the triangles are symmetrical. Yeah, all you're doing is you're finding the area underneath the velocity time graph. It's just one half base times height. Okay? There's no square, there's no nothing. It's just oh, one half base times height. All three you're going to get the same way. The disadvantage of the tri of the triangle, the velocity time graph, and the disadvantage of that using the time is if you screwed up the time calculation, then you're going to screw up that maximum height. Okay, no matter what, because that's dependent upon time. The advantage of using that equation is that it's only based upon known values of initial and final velocity. Okay? Y'all are big people now. You can pick whichever method that you want. I don't care. It's all up to you. Okay. But when you get to that next one, where you calculate that height at one second and two seconds,
The only way you can do that is to plug those numbers into one half at squared plus v naught time. Okay, that's it. That's the only thing that you can do. Got this idea. Now, we're going to circle back to where we started. So here's this freshman that we're going to launch at 20 meters per second at a god-awful prime angle of 31 degrees. Thank you, Keith. And here's the deal. I want to find the maximum height. I want to find the time up. I want to find the time down. Down. I want to find all of these things. Now, here's a visual that I want you to get. Okay? We said that vertical component was 10.3 meters per second. And what was the horizontal component? 17.1. What? 17.1. Now, here's the visual that I want you to have. Okay, I want you to have this visual. Situation number one, we're going to launch this freshman out of the cannon at 20 meters per second. Situation number two, we're going to launch his twin brother straight up with a velocity of 10.3 meters per second. Okay, so imagine this. One brother gets launched at 20 meters per second at an angle of 31 degrees. The other twin gets launched straight up at 10.3. Which one's going to reach their maximum height first? Or will it be the exact same? Exact same. Why? Well, because like both their times will be equal. Why? That way up and down. Because what the only force... Because the only force... What happens in the Y stays in the Y. What happens in the Y stays in the Y. What happens in the X? I was getting there. I was going to say the only force acting is gravity. That's true. That's the key. Does the gravity mafia... Does the gravity mafia have any influence over the horizontal component? No. No. The gravity mafia only controls Vegas, which is the vertical component. So you can think of the vertical component being Vegas. Okay? That's the only influence where the mob has. Okay? Vegas, vertical. Remember that. That's the only way that the gravity mafia influences these, these, these things. Okay? So, there's our vertical, there's Vegas, that's what the mob is going to influence. That's where it's going to happen. So, these are both going to reach the same height at the exact same time. Because gravity doesn't differentiate. So again, if you could draw a line at a certain point in time, 0.5 seconds, whatever that is, they would both be at the exact same height at the exact same time. Okay? Okay. They're both going to hit velocity, their maximum height at the exact same time. They're both going to land at the exact same time. Okay? So everything is going to stay the same because it was what Vitor said. Gravity as a force is only going to influence the vertical component. Okay? So gravity is going to say, I can't tell the difference between the two of them because I can only influence that vertical component of the velocity. Okay. So, max height for both of those. Would anybody get the max height? 5.41 meters. What'd you get? 5.41. 5. 5. 5. 5.41 meters? Yeah. Time up was 1.05. Time down is 1.05. Okay? There you go. Now, what we can find on the freshman that's launched at an angle, we can figure out how far the freshman's going to go. We can calculate the range of the freshman, okay? And again, what happens in the X stays in the X. What happens in the Y stays in the Y. This is why you have to realize that that's your VX, okay? That's your horizontal component of the velocity, right? So if you want to find that range, that was 17.1 meters per second. Cool with that? Yeah. Yeah. Now... Do we use 1.05 or do we use 2.10? Why 2.10? That's the total time. Training. That's the total time that he's going to be in the air. Okay? So that's going to be 2.10 seconds. So somebody take 17.1 times 2.1, 34 or something. 35.9. 30 what? 
35.9 meters. Okay, that's a decent shot, okay? About a third of the length of the football field. Okay, pretty decent shot. Okay, got that. So when something is launched at an angle, I cannot emphasize this or no. When you get any kind of launch angle, you find that VY, you find that VX. And what happens in the Y stays in the Y, what happens in the X stays in the X. And then once you get that velocity, never speak of that again, okay? Because that's not, what, and here's the most common mistake that's made, is that kids will see that 20 meters per second, and they're gonna try and plug that, and they're gonna see something like, oh, go away. And they're gonna see something like, oh, X equals 1 half AT squared plus V naught time. And they're gonna try and put in that 20 meters per second for that velocity, okay? Ah, no. Bad, or no. You guys see? Because the mob only controls Vegas and the vertical. You lie. Okay, good news is I'm done. So let me have, but there's some stuff I need to explain on the assignment. So, but the good news is you get a lot of time to work on the assignment. So, can I stop this? Or? Yeah, stop it for a second. All right, so let me give you the visual on number one, okay? Playoff start today, so it's kind of timely. I've been watching them. So, huh? I've been watching them. The Rays versus Cleveland. I really don't care about any of the teams, but I just really hate Atlanta. Why? Why? Because they always win. No, they don't. No, they don't. They won last year. And that's I know. They had like I'm just telling barely any championships for any I don't franchise. Want the oh, I do hate the Yankees with an yeah. unadulterated passion. Or the passion. Dodgers. I don't want the Dodgers. No, I can. I don't actually. I don't know why, but I've always liked the Dodgers. I don't know why. But I always have. All my bucket list. I want to be here for the Astros. Who, who's your team? <laughs> Royals. I really don't care that much about baseball, but the obviously the Royals. <laughs> yeah, so my dream, if I had a bucket list, I would watch the Kansas City Royals play the Los Angeles Dodgers in Dodger Stadium. Dodger Stadium? Yeah. Yep. That's the only stadium I really want to go to. I don't know why. Always have. Okay. So let's talk about number one. So here's the situation. So here's the baseball. It's going to be launched horizontally. Okay, this is a limiting problem. Listen to me. It's going to be launched horizontally. So one situation is going to have a pretty high VX. The other one, you're going to throw it, and it's going to have a slightly smaller VX. Okay? Here's the catcher. Okay? Horribly out of scale, but you get the point. Great. So they're both going to make it to the catcher. So don't tell me, oh, the faster ball will travel farther. They're both going to be get caught by the catcher. Range isn't going to be the same. They're both going to get caught. What you want to look at when you answer this question is which one is going to be in the air longer and which one is gonna have more time for the Gravity Mafia to work on it? Okay, that's what you wanna think about, okay? Now, on problem number two, listen to me. Here's the table. You're gonna have a, a, a hockey puck that's moving across this thing on a frictionless surface and the hockey puck is already moving. We're not going to push it. It's already been pushed. All right. It's not, don't push it. Okay? Don't push it. It's already moving. It's already moving on a frictionless surface. Okay? Okay. So, I've given you the mass of the hockey puck. Okay? 0.1 kilograms. So, what you want to do using a scale, a ruler. You're gonna set up a scale and you're gonna draw all the forces acting on the hockey puck. Now, when you get to this hockey puck over here, this is why I've got that double set of asterisks. That is right before it hits the ground, okay? It has not hit the ground. Like, you could put a piece of paper in between the two of them. Okay, that's it. 
It has not hit the ground. So don't sit there and go, oh, it's lost in New Zealand. It's hit the ground, too. Okay? No, it has not hit the ground. Are we really close? It has hit the ground. It has hit the ground. I emphasize again. It has hit the ground. Close. Not there. So, obviously, when it's on the table, one of the two forces are going to be acting on it. Okay, force normal and force gravity. There you go. Why you're going to set up a scale. Maybe you're going to let one centimeter equal a newton. Something like that. Okay? You're going to draw it with a ruler. Okay? Now, when you get to B, you're going to draw the acceleration vectors. So to figure out if it's accelerating, where are you going to look? Kind of. If something's going to accelerate, what do the forces have to not add up to? Zero. 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 So look at the force vectors up above. If the force vectors add up to equal to zero, what's your acceleration vector going to be? Zero. And if the force is, if there is an unbalanced force, guess what? Six. You're going to get an acceleration. Again, set up a scale. Maybe you let one centimeter equal 10 meter per second squared, something like that. When you get to C, it's already moving. You'd be amazed at how many kids want to push this thing. It's like, no, listen, Skippy, it's already moving. So imagine this hockey puck is moving along five meters per second. Now, if you were to determine whether or not that acceleration vector, if that velocity vector changes, look at your acceleration vectors. If there's no acceleration vector, guess what? Your velocity vector doesn't change. If there is an acceleration vector, guess what? It does change. It, cha it does change. And that's going to tell you which direction it's going to change. So what you want to do is draw velocity vectors for the two when it's on the table and then the two when it's off the table. Okay? What I would recommend, because you're going to draw it at 0 0.6 and 1.2, what I would recommend is that you just treat it like it's dropped. Figure out, drop it, falls 0 0.6. Drop it, falls 1.2. Okay, that's the easiest way to think about that. Just use that equation. On the back side, got some questions to answer about the puck. When you get to five and six, so here's the setup. On number five, you're going to hit this golf ball at 32 meters per second, not 31, but 32, at an angle of 30 degrees, not 31, but 30. Okay? So what's the first thing that you're going to do with that velocity vector? Find the vertical and horizontal components. Exactly. Then are you ever going to use that no. 32 meters per second again? No. No. It Never. is dead to you. It is a gateway vector. Okay? It's a gateway. You just use that to get to other vectors and then never speak of it again. Now, the only thing that changes on number six is that we're still going to launch it at 32 meters per second, but then we're going to launch it at 60 degrees. Okay, find your X and Y components. When you get to number eight, let me give you a visual about number eight. You're on a cliff 200 meters high, which is, or 20 meters high. 20, 200, whatever. What's the decimal point between friends? So you're on a cliff 20 meters high. You're going to hit this at 40 meters per second at an angle of 60 degrees. So, golf ball is going to go like this. Doink. Doink. Boing. Boing. Now, you're going to find the maximum height as measured from the bottom of the ground. So, this is almost like that ball off the building problem. Okay? What's the only thing that's going to determine the maximum height? Vx, Vy, or your overall launch velocity? Vy. Vy. Find the Vy. Use that to find your maximum height. Then you need to find the time up, you need to find the time down. Which one's going to be bigger, your time up or your time down? Time down. Time down. Time down. Now, on D, on D, what I'm asking you to find at D is the speed of the ball when it lands. And I tell you, that's the resultant of your x and y velocity vectors. So when this thing lands, you're going to have a vx. And you're going to have a VY. Now think this through. Is the VY when it lands going to be bigger or smaller than the VY when it takes off? 
bigger. Ooh. Why? Because it has more time to accelerate. Yeah, it's going to fall longer, right? So what I want as that speed on that last question on number eight, okay, is I want that hypotenuse. You don't have to worry about the angle, okay? I don't want the angle. I just want the magnitude of that result. Now, think about this. You're going to launch it at 40 meters per second. When it lands, is the speed going to be bigger or smaller than 40 meters per second? Bigger. 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 Because you're going to have the same X component, but you're going to have a bigger Y component. So your answer on D has to be bigger than 40 meters per second. 40 meters per second. Now, that angle is referring to what's going to happen at the top, the velocity vector and the acceleration vector. And then you have some questions out of the book. When you get to question 72, this will make sense when you get to question 72 because it's a horrible question. It's actually a good question. They just completely butchered significant digits. Assume that there's three significant digits because the book only gives you like one or two. So assume that there's three significant digits when you're doing those calculations. So, okay, I'm done. You're on your